Is your small business growing? That's the question we address right here on the Grow Your Biz Show. It's where we interview strategic entrepreneurs who inform and inspire you on your solopreneur or small company journey. Thanks for joining us on this episode of the Grow Your Biz Show. Hi, and welcome to episode number 73 of the Grow Your Biz Show. I'm Paul Madsen, host of the program and founder of Grow Media. GrowMedia.com helps small business owners to find their most marketable and most profitable business niches. Now, onto the show. I am so thrilled today because in-house I have none other than Miss Lisa Larson. Lisa, welcome to the program. Thank you. Lisa is uh, famous in, in these parts. I think many of you know of her. In case some of you don't, we'll uh, certainly get to the background and her whole story as well. But Lisa, I, it's been fun. We've been trying to set a date for quite a while, and here we are finally. Here we are, yeah. That's, that's great. Thanks for coming. So, Lisa, I'd like to just jump right into the interview. All right. I'm going to ask you, what business are you in? I am in the business of creating moments in music that make people feel good. Well, you know what? I agree, <laughs> because I've been to several of your concerts. Uh, in case you didn't know, Lisa is the owner, founder, proprietor of High Heel the Band. Correct. And uh, they perform all over the Midwest, right? Uh, mainly here in the Omaha Lincoln area. Okay, yeah. great, great. And well, tell us how you make those people feel good. Tell us, tell us a little bit about what the band does, where it goes. How do you, how do you make people feel good? Uh, we do songs, mainly songs that I like from the day when, uh, when I was growing up and in high school and college, um, songs from the 70s, 80s, and 90s. Um, those are the songs that I enjoy, and I think when I sing them, it comes across to other people, and then they're able to maybe relive some moments in their past, you know, whether it be, uh, you know, maybe when a couple first met, um, that sort of thing. Well, that, and that's really it, I think, with music. I, I read an article a while back that talked about how the things we really grab onto are oftentimes the things, the, the memories come from when we first experienced them. We first experienced that song, and you're just absolutely right. We first uh, 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 see the meet, meet the other person or whatever, mm -hmm. and, and music just kind of, oh, that that song was big when this happened to me. Yes, yeah. the, the, a song brings all those memories back. And, and what kinds of songs? I mean, what, what, what's an example of some of the songs? You know, we do so many, Heart, Pat Benatar, Journey, um, Sugar Land. Uh, we, you know, we've ventured into a little bit of country. But again, those are all fun, happy songs that make people feel good. They're songs that people can sing along to. And I think that's what makes High Heel, different than some of the other bands in town. We are definitely focused on being family friendly. Right. Um, I remember I made a trip, um, several trips actually, with my family to Branson, Missouri. Mm -hmm. uh, we go to Silver Dollar City. And it made such an impression on me that, that all the musicians and the singers and the shows there were family friendly. And of course, that's awesome because you have your kids with you and that's the way you want it to be. Sure. And then if you're there over a weekend, you would go to church on Sunday morning and you'd see the same musicians doing sacred songs. And I remember uh, okay. um, also in that town, it shuts down at 10 o'clock at night. Yeah. There's nothing going on late at night. Okay. But just remember, you know, leaving and having the impression that if I ever did a band again, I would want it to be in that sort of realm. Sure. Well, and I think you've achieved that. And so, again, I've been to, to I don't know how many, several of your shows. And um, t tell the viewers about some of the venues that you play, uh, where you, what, what a typical place they could see you. Yeah, I, I mean, extremely blessed to have, to have gotten on board for some of the annual events here in Omaha. Um, some of the larger ones that I do are, are Taste of Omaha, uh, Nebraska Wine and Balloon Fest, um, Stinson Park in Exarban Village, uh, Village Point, Shadow Lake Malls do a concert series. Uh, in Lincoln, we do Haymarket in White. Yeah. And these are annual events that bring in anywhere from 1,200 to 10,000 people. Not to imagine that there's 10,000 people at 
the wine and balloon fest watching me. They're, no. they're, they're doing other activities. Right, right, right. But there are that many people sure. there in an evening well, performance when you Well, and I think the live play. music brings people out. They, they can hear us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's one, they, these, the, the organizers of these events could set up a DJ uh, booth or just to mm -hmm. play the songs in the background. But what's the appeal of having you and your group there? Well, again, I think it's the interaction with the people. I, I like to get uh, people involved, uh, bring um, little girls up to the stage, for instance, and we always carry 20 pink cowboy hats. Yeah. And so they, they, they come up one, two, three, and the next thing you know, you've got 10 or 20 little girls up there, and, yeah. and uh, we top them with pink cowboy hats, and we let them sing along. I usually do Shania Twain, me and yeah. I feel like a woman, <laughs> just another classic, sure. and I let them sing in the microphone. Sure. And you'll see the parents start crowding around the stage with their video cameras and their oh, cameras. Yeah. Again, creating a moment. Memories, moments, emotions, and you know, the parents, uh, maybe they, they uh, grew up uh, hooked on Don't Stop Believing" or something like that, and, and now they're introducing those generational songs to their kids. How? because of your interaction. I mean, it's sure it could play on the radio or the, the iPod or whatever, or, but you are giving that a whole different set of interaction, right? Right, yeah, I mean, we do the classics. Yeah. So just because, you know, Journey is that many years old, uh, my kids all know who yeah. Journey is, and they know all those songs. Well, that's the funny thing. I those was at a work. wedding not yeah. terribly long ago, and uh, the people there were born long after most of these songs came out. Yeah. But that, what they know them, don't they? They do, yeah. And, and it's because they're classic. I can titles. stop singing and put the microphone out there and they, w they could sing the whole song. Everybody knows it, yeah. yeah. I actually went to a, a Journey concert uh, a year and a half ago or so down in Lincoln and uh, uh, it was more like a uh, choir event. Yeah. Because everybody in the place knew every word and they're all singing along. And that's what happens at your events. I see it. I've, I've been there with my I hope so. Chair. I mean, I, I see something that I like at a big concert like that and I steal it. Yeah. <laughs> well, it works. I mean, I, you're, well, and I love how you have the wireless mic, and you're out there, uh, you know, in the crowd. Yes, far, I got uh, the What's the range insane. of that thing, anyway? How far will that go? Well, it isn't so so much how far the the microphone still works. It's when I get away from oh. the sound system that there's a there's a delay process oh, well, that's that goes not on. Good. Yeah. Because <laughs> I don't do in ears. I, but, I do I do wedges. And, like we talked about before, you're experienced. Yeah. You've seen a lot of things going. We straight a little bit. Um, I, uh, you, you, your why for doing this is is because it just makes you happy as well, and you gives me joy. You really have a gift. To share. Well, that's the thing. You have a gift, and you share it, and I think that makes you happy too, right? It does. Well, and it makes lots of other people happy. You talked about what makes you different. Did we go into great detail on that? Do you have any other ideas about what makes High Heel the band different than other cover bands in the area? I always wear high heels. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think there's any other band in town that does that. I, I I probably really not, don't. especially if they're all males. White, so. white go-go boots. Yes, yes, if and you that's will. the trademark, isn't it? I can pull it off. Yes, it, you pull it <laughs> off very well. Yes, you do. Well, that's great. So uh, the differentiator, yeah, I think is branding with the, with you the know, boots. You I, know, I, I do want to bring this up and just, just make sure that, that um, I mention this because it is the most important reason why I even exist, but I am a Christian, mm -hmm. and I, that part of it, I think, is what makes me different than okay. everybody else, because I often will profess that from the stage. Well, and you hinted at that, whether you talked about the clean family thing, but yeah. go on to Well, I'll, more I'll often just say that I wouldn't let a moment like this go by without saying thank you to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And you I, have a verse, too, you know. You like. Yes, well, um, I just, you know, I have had some, some bumps in the road, and, and um, when you get your priorities out of order, that's when you run into trouble. And so when you're in a band or when you front a band, it's, it's real easy to get caught up in the fame part of it and the popularity part of it and people pay you more when you do this. And you have to let that, that side of it go. You mentioned you had got caught up sometimes and how many dates do I have? Yes. And uh, what? how often are you playing? And, and what happened, you know, this happened about, I've had high heel about 14 years, but what okay. happened about, oh, two or three years into it is I got my priorities out of order because I really thought that I had to get this launched and, and, uh, and going. Yeah. 
and uh, I almost lost everything, mm. in, you know, including my marriage and my kids were younger, yeah. and I had to make a decision to completely restructure and change things around. And, and what it came down to is um, playing less and only doing the family outdoor events like I talked about okay. from the very beginning. Right. So now I mainly just play in the summer, and you know, I play when I play, right. and then when I don't, great. You know, that's, a, that's time that I can be on vacation with. We, we still do family vacations together. Sure. I go camping with my husband, and that's, that's what's more important. The priority is mm -hmm. God first, you know, then your husband, your spouse, you know, and, yeah. and your, you know, your family, sure. And, sure. and then your hobby or your job, if, right. should it be the right. same thing. For me, God, it's, it's, it's a hobby. Yeah, right. and, uh, and, the, and the scripture is, um, that, that I wanted to mention is, you know, just, just about God being, being first in your life. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things will be given to you. And I found that daily, daily, if I put him first and ask him to order my day, he does. And all yeah. these things that I think I want <laughs> or that I think that I have to have. Um, Come clear. Come, they do. Become, it yeah. becomes clearer or what, what you really need. You know, that, you, you <laughs> gave me a thought there. I mean, there's all these... Uh, tools out there, software and, and uh, the, the um, Stephen Covey daily planners and books and, and you're old enough maybe to remember when we all did that on notebooks and carried our pads around with us and all that. And, um, I'm afraid I know, am, yeah. yeah, I'm old enough. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> At any rate, uh, I, maybe you have a new idea for a, a daily planner and it, it's the God planner. Yes, Well, absolutely. that helps things. How, how hard was it? I mean, we talk about, you know, your band is a business and we talk about struggles and bumps in the road. I mean, what was going on when, it, when you got that priority problem issue? I mean, were there too many indoor things and you're always traveling and always setting up stuff and just not enough family time or what really happened? It really was, yeah. It was just, you know, I was playing um, some bars and some clubs mm. and um, that's the part that Pretty much when I established that I wasn't going to do that anymore, everything changed. I mean, a bar or club doesn't even call me to play there anymore. Yeah. They don't even call me. They know, yeah. I mean, it was, it's a, it was a spiritual um, decision, and it was one that God honored, and I, I'm just protected from that side of it. Yeah. Well, that's, uh, that's terrific that you were and able it, it, you know, And it saved my marriage. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and, you know, entrepreneurs have those kind of bumps, you know, and th yours was unique, and... Uh, being too much in demand, right? Well, it, it, you know, it, it, the small business person who starts a business, you know, if it's just them, they they jump in and, and it's like you had. you had too many dates, too many things. So often that that lifestyle balance. Do you have any advice for people how to uh, achieve that lifestyle balance of not working too much and not working? It, and it, still it is a balance, and it goes back to the scripture that I talked about okay. because you know. It, I remember also making the decision that if God wasn't going to be a part of this band and what I'm doing, then I really had no business being in this business. Wasn't what you wanted, yeah. Yeah, I'm also active in my church and you know and on the worship team and and that sort of thing and 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 some of these ideas cross over into that too. Well, sure. It's it's the same with ministry. You can't get so overly involved in ministry that you're not taking care well, of your that. marriage and your family. I've seen you that. Know, the, I've seen the people. priority list is is exactly the same. Yeah, the, the, the God planner. I have to go back <laughs> to the God planner. Yeah, I might yeah. have to try that a little bit more than I do. That's that's good advice right there. Well, take us back, uh, uh, Lisa, to uh, how you got started in all this. I mean, I I think you got started maybe when you're four years old performing in your bedroom, it, it sounded yeah. like. I think God downloads those gifts into you from, from the very, very beginning. So I, I think from the, from the time I could walk, I remember getting up on the coffee table, and of course back then we didn't have karaoke or microphones no. or anything like that. So you know, a hairbrush or a jump rope <laughs> you know, up on the coffee table would work for me. And yeah. there, you know, there's influences, of course, on TV. I would see Cher. Okay. Um, I listened to a lot of Barbra Streisand and tried to imitate her voice. Okay. Um, as far as like variety shows, I watched Donnie and Marie oh, Osmond. Yes. Oh yeah. Loved their humor and their music yeah. and you know and the clothes and the hair and Everything. the sparkles yeah. and sequins. Yeah. Um, Carol Burnett, same thing. Sure. Just just love her. To, to this day, I, I still watch reruns of all those shows. Oh yeah. And you were inspired uh, by these artists. Mm -hmm. I mean. 
at what point did you did it click in your brain to say, I want to be them, I want to be like them, I want to do this? Well, Paul, I grew up in a really small town of 250 people, and there was not a lot of opportunity for music there. No, no. I mean, I think when I was a senior in high school, they finally decided they were going to do a musical, and I did oh, that. Right. But otherwise, you know, maybe a few quartets, a um, couple of solos here and there at a contest in yeah. Peru, Nebraska. I don't know. There yeah. just there wasn't a lot of opportunities sure. to sing. And so when I graduated from high school, I couldn't wait to get out of there to pursue you know, my music career, but I uh, was also very interested in art, so in, in college I was an art major. Okay. But during uh, one of my art classes, there was a student there that says, hey, I'm trying out for a band tonight. Ah. Do you want to go to the audition with me? I'm like, what? I'd love <laughs> sure, to. Sure, hey, thanks for asking. So yeah. that was the first time I was in, ever introduced to what that sort of an atmosphere even looks like. Sure. Um, I went with him, he sang. So and you're 18 years old, Yeah, years old, and, he, yeah. and you know, and he didn't get the part, and I later ran into that band. Uh -huh. I was in Lincoln at UNL, and I ran into that band at Chesterfields, if you remember that place. I do, yeah. And uh, I said, hey, um, did it work out? Did you give that any? No, he didn't get the job. And I said, could I try out? And so I did, and not even a band really worth mentioning. I don't even remember what the name of right, that band right. was. But Doesn't there matter. was a few smaller bands that pretty much went nowhere along the way. But my big break was when I auditioned and got into the already established band, High Heel and the Sneakers, okay. which was out of Omaha. And they were all set already. They, they were all they, set, what, yeah. They did bar circuit yeah, or they what? Yeah, they did a lot of bars, yep. They were... So this was in the early 90s, but they had already been together eight years wow. after I joined. And the lady singer, awesome singer, she decided to do something different. There was talk about the band breaking up, and somebody mentioned, somebody heard me sing somewhere that I should audition. I did. I mean, the rest is history. I did. You auditioned. You became the lead. Did four years with High Heel and the Sneakers. Mostly in the bar circuit, not not the outdoor venue things. No, a lot of festivals. Outdoor. Festivals they did too. everything. That's that's back when bands played four or five nights a week. Wow. So so that four years seems wow. seems long to me <laughs> because we played so often. Wow. In well, this band, I don't know. I don't play that much. I just I play a few times a year. Sure. In High Heel and the Sneakers, we played. I don't know, started, we played Tuesday through Sunday. Wow, that's crazy. It reminded yeah. me of a, a story I heard. I can't remember what book I read this in. Um, it was a business book and just talking about skill development. And, you know, people think about the Beatles and how they broke on the scene and, and how they were so good and so tight and so exciting and all that. And then it, 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 it went on to say that they played in these tiny venues in England. Yeah in small towns, and they would have to play for eight and ten hour gigs. Oh, Can you yeah. imagine? And then they just have to have the, 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 the amount of music yeah, today. I, I was extremely fortunate to walk into a, an ideal situation. And I'm very grateful for the sneakers, if you will, sure, yeah. for giving me sneakers, that opportunity. Yeah. Really, really. Sure. They were, uh, High Yield the Sneakers was just in 2017, inducted into the Iowa Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Really? Is that so, right? Yeah. And did they have a lot of original stuff too? You know, a few, yeah. Yeah, okay. John, Some, yeah. John Rogers is the, uh, the, um, the owner of that band, and he started that band. And uh, he, he did write some, some pretty yeah. cool songs. Now, they're not still going, or they're still going? Hi, no, High Hill and the Sneakers broke up in, in the early 90s. Yep, the, saw the end the, of that. Mm -hmm. You took the, some of the branding and well, ran I took, with it. Yeah, I actually, then well, I got, you I got married. Uh, yeah. So after High Hill and the Sneakers, okay, keep the story going, I got no. married, I got saved, okay. and uh, we started a family, and I literally took 12 years off to wow. raise my family. Okay. Okay, then when I got the urge to start singing again, that's when I started High Heel, and of course shared with you the idea of the impression that Branson made on me. Yes. Silver Dollar well, City and, 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 and how I wanted it to be. As a purpose, as a reason, yeah. and it's a, yeah. as a cause, if yeah. you will. Yeah. Well, that's a great story. And so then that was 14 years ago that you got back into it. Correct. How hard, again, we're here for entrepreneurs, for startups, for launchers. You're kind of, I mean, there was a band, there was a brand, but 12 years off is a big dark hole. Tell me about relaunching yourself, about getting that word out again about starting up, about selling yourself again, almost new on the open market. How'd that go? 
Well, you know, as, as I mentioned earlier, it was one of those situations where I really got caught up in the idea of having uh -huh. to take every show okay. that came in. But you got uh, shows. Oh, I did. Was and it hard to? I definitely rode on the coattails of High Heel and the Sneakers. Right. But even after a 12 year gap? Oh, yeah. They're still. They still remembered High Heel. Wow. And they still do. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, I'm, I also do. Um, some inspirational speaking, mm -hmm. and and even um, some of my high heel shows, I will ask people if they remember high heel and the sneakers. Sure, sure. And they do. Oh yeah, I they do. do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I knew. I went to college with a guy who was uh, your keyboarder. <laughs> oh really? Doc. Yeah. Doc. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. And so, um, at any rate, um, um, you, you, there was a reputation. You got it going. Did you have to knock on doors to I say, did. "Get me gigs"? Yep, that's back. That's back when. Believe it or not, no internet. Fourteen or, years ago is different. I didn't, you know, didn't even have a website. Yeah. At the very, very beginning, right. and that's when you called everybody for a rehearsal. Right, right. You didn't email them. You called them. Right, right. And I did a lot of phone calls, and I also, it's where you take and you put pictures together and you type everything out and. You cold call. You yeah, know. yeah. Well, and you and talk to people, did, and you're probably pretty good at that, though. I'm guessing you have a little bit of an out. I, I have out. a background. Um, you know, during some of that time off that I in, in music, I also worked in retail for many, many years, mm -hmm. and I, I I do know how to sell. You're a people person. I know how to sell. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> you find yeah. out what people want. Yeah. That's all you have to do. Well, that's you just it. find out what people want and what they need. Well, and, and you give them what they need. Yeah. Way back to the first question we started talking about, what do uh, what does uh, uh, Shadow Ridge Mall want? Well, they want people to be on their facility. They do. To spend money at their retailers, and how do they get that? They have Lisa Larson and her band help the customers come to feel better, feel good. Escape from life Shop, for a while. You know, go you to know, the restaurants, and, and and you're the drawing yeah. card, and they're there, and everybody wins. And it is, and it's good. It's good to invest in people and in the community. Yeah, well, and, 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 that, that, and that's what they do. That's, that's pain. That's why those are some of my favorite venues. You bet, you bet. Paying dividends, long term for you, huh? Yes, sir. Sounds great. Well, um, again, we're for the startup company. You are a company. Tell us a little bit about the nuts and bolts of the music business behind the scenes that people don't know. They go to the show, they see the glamorous band playing. They don't even see all the drudgery of picking up those heavy speakers <laughs> and all that equipment. Man, that has to be hard work. I'll tell you what. And from, getting the gigs. Yeah, from and, the beginning, I decided that I was going to hire out production and the guy that handles and excellent. picks up all the, the heavy speakers Wonderful. and that sort of So that, that is definitely you bro broke your back a yet, production huh? company. Um, is separate and um, so you're hiring out. No you're regrets there. Out no regrets yes. there. I don't have my own sound system. Oh, really? uh, okay. No. They, oh, they I mean, I have that. a small sound system sure. in my basement that we, you know, sure. where we do rehearsals, that sort of thing. But for these are some bigger shows that we do. Sure. Well, um, that makes corporate great events sense. Yeah. and festivals and your, your musicians love that, don't they? <laughs> they do. Yeah. I mean, they have to bring their amp and their guitar. Yeah. Keyboards. Plug and play. That's about it. You know, yeah. get there at six and they're home by ten. Well, it's tell just, us the the wannabes out there about the booking, the ticketing, the uh, the the revenue, not revenue per se, but uh, I mean, just collections. I mean, all the nuts and bolts of a music business that people don't know about. Well, I, I you know I have a standard like? contract. It just takes time. Every mm -hmm. every show is different, but I put a standard contract together for each show. Yeah. Just, um, and you have a good reputation, so I think that probably, and, and a lot of repeat venues, I right? I hope so. You know, I, I hope so. I've, I've I, I think so. <laughs> never, I've, I've never had any, any situations, but you know, also just um, making sure that the musicians are available. You know, yeah. a lot of the guys I work with now, not in the beginning, but the guys that I work with now, in the beginning it was kind of like it was the same guys forever, yeah. and they could only do my band. Uh, but since I don't play as much as I used to, yeah. I use different musicians. Okay. They might be in other bands, well, and um, I have to sometimes work around other schedules. But they work with me, and I work with them. Sure. And so just I make sure you know. So you're talking about so I do contracting. Uh, make sure I have the availability of the um, musicians. Um, sure. There's rehearsals involved. Lots of juggling. I make the, the set lists because yeah. every. Every venue is different. Right. Setless. Sure. Vary a little bit, and all of it just takes time. A lot of details that people don't know about. What advice do you have, in a nutshell, for someone who would want to try to do something in the entertainment business? 
I would say to not be afraid of rejection. <laughs> I, I think so many people will say, um, when they're asking me for advice, they'll say, how did, you, how did you get that gig? But what they don't understand is how many I lost before I got yeah, that Yeah, yeah. And you just can't let rejection get you down. Right. The other thing I would say is to take risks. You, you, you have to take a risk. I've seen things that I really like. I'm not, I'm not sure if we can do that or not, but you know what, I really like that. I want to try and do that. I want to try and incorporate that moment from the stage. Mm -hmm. Can we do it? Um, so the other advice I would give is rehearse it. Don't just tell your musicians what you think yeah. in your mind you want to yeah. do, but get them in the basement and rehearse it. Rehearse that moment. Yes. And I will say even on the worship team too, you can take a, a special spiritual moment and you can rehearse it. Mm -hmm. I don't mean to the point where it sounds right. canned, no, but, but so that you know what you're doing it, so that people can understand and follow. It's about preparation. Preparation, it's absolutely. Preparation. And, the, you know, and, and the last piece of advice is just loving your audience. You are there for them, not the other way around. Right. Love your audience. And I do. I, I just I well, love that's what comes through. the people. That's what comes through people. with you, Lisa. Is that I think that's why people repeatedly come out and see High Heel because you love them. You're doing your passion. You're doing something uh, you have a high skill for, and it all comes together. And people really want to see more, and that's why they keep coming out to see the band and, Thank you. and you. And Lisa, as we wrap up, tell us about uh, some of the things you're doing with your church coming up. Well, what's going on right now is a, an annual Christmas concert. And it's been a, a dream of mine for years. So this week, actually, planning um, the fourth annual High Heel Christmas concert at my home church, Flatland Church. Mm -hmm. We are on 144th Street between Maple and Fort. And uh, last year, 2018, was so packed, we had to park cars across the street no. over at Buffett Middle School. So, you know, we're going to be talking about possibly doing a matinee or extended sure. another evening. Maybe we'll get some pictures I, of that on the show here. I couldn't and, uh, be more excited or, or more blessed. We've, we've pulled in um, a lot, uh, I've pulled in a lot of people, other musicians from outside uh, um, to come and sing with me, other bands, and then also our worship team and our worship leader, and it's just exploded. It's just, it's, I love it. That's I great. Just, Any final words, Lisa? That's, a, that's an inspiration. Be yourself. Be yourself. Be yourself. There. Well, you know? and, and that's it. I think you are, your sincerity manages to come from a stage far away, way back to the back. <laughs> I ask the Lord to search my heart and, and to find in there what, whatever He doesn't like and, and do away with it. And then I feel like I can be holy and pure and do exactly what He wants me to do, even sing in a rock band. Amen. <laughs> Thanks for coming out. Lisa, you've been a great guest. Thank you, Paul. That wraps up episode 73 of the Grow Your Biz show. Please uh, repeat it and hear all the wisdom from Lisa here because she's got a lot of it. Uh, be sure to check out growmedia.com for the upcoming retreats, seminars, and coaching opportunities that I do with small business. Thanks for joining us. And until next week, go out and grow something.